let's say we have a molecule that looks like this. Uh, so this is cyclopentane. And we perform a chlorination reaction. So we are going to add a chlorine atom. Chlorine atom. And remember, chlorine has seven valence electrons. So we have one unpaired electron. Unpaired electron. Okay. Um, and we can add this chlorine into this cyclopentane. The question is how many possible uh, products will form. Uh, and we're looking for constitutional constitutional isomers. Remember that constitutional isomers have the same formula, different arrangement of atoms. So let's get rid of this. How many possible constitutional isomers can be formed through the addition of this chlorine? You might be tempted to say five. We can form one here, 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 and here. Well, maybe, but if we were to draw out the product of this reaction, sorry, okay, let's say we add a chlorine here, and let's say we draw out another product, possible product, with the chlorine in a different position, and so on and so forth. Notice how these two are the exact same molecule. They're just rotated. So these are, these two are the same molecule. And if we, even if we draw a product at the other end, they're the same thing. They're just rotated. They're just rotated around. Like, I don't know if I can do this actually. If I were to rotate it, can I, can I do this? Can I rotate you? Uh, actually, I don't know if I can. Uh, maybe, no, I can't. But anyway, you should be able to see that these are the same molecule rotated. So how many possible products will form? There's only going to be one possible product. Because no matter where you add this chlorine, it's going to be the same molecule, just rotated. So only one constitutional isomer can form. Okay, let's make this a little more difficult. What about this molecule here? Um, by the way, if you want to practice your IUPAC um, nomenclature, this is actually going to be uh, one methyl uh, cyclopropane. Methyl. Cyclo a cyclopentane. Did I say propane? I meant cyclopentane. And again, we're going to perform the same reaction with a single chlorine atom. How many possible structural isomers can form from this? Well, let's draw them out. We can have one... Uh, well, the most obvious one would probably be to just add it to the tip of this methyl. Okay, so that's one. Uh, we might be able to add it to here, this base, um, this base where the three carbons join. So that's another one. This is these two are not the same. They are not uh, the same. They have the same formula, but they do not have the same arrangement of atoms. So they are constitutional isomers. They are going to be different products. Uh, we can have one bonded to this carbon over here. Again, they're not the same. They're not going to be the same atom, uh, same molecule, sorry. And finally, we can have one here. Uh, the difference between these two is that over here, we have the chlorine um, one atom away. Well, uh, so if we were to label this central carbon over here, this tertiary carbon one, you would put 
the chlorine in position two, whereas over here, we would put it in position three. So now you might be asking, well, why don't we have five? Why don't, why can't we, for example, put the chlorine over here? Keep rotating it around. Well, notice that if we were to flip this over, we would just get this product. And you can see that if you were to number them, because remember, um, we can technically number the carbon atoms in whatever order we want, or not order, but um, either in the clockwise or counterclockwise direction, because this atom is this molecule is symmetric. So we can also label it like this, and we notice we get the same exact compound. So this is not going to be a new compound. So we have to be a little careful with that. We have to be careful not to repeat compounds. So here we have four possible products. Four possible products, okay? Okay, now let's get to a much trickier one. Again, we're going to start off with a pentane, cyclopentane, but we're going to have uh, two methyl groups coming out of this top. And if you want to practice your IUPAC nomenclature, this is going to be 1,1-dimethyl one, one uh, cyclopentane. Okay, how many possible monochlorination products are there going to be from here? Now, uh, you might want to, you might trick yourself into saying, oh, we have more possible chlorine bonding sites, and therefore we will have more products. Well, let's see. Let's draw out the possible products. Okay, uh, we can put a chlorine here, uh, and that's going to be one possible product. But notice that if we put the chlorine on the other one, on the other methyl group sticking out, well, these are going to be the same molecule. They're the same molecule. They're just rotated. These are not constitutional isomers. They're the same molecule. And so this is not going to be a new product. Not new. It is going to be a product, but it's not a new one. We've already counted it. So that doesn't count. Uh, we can draw one of the chlorines going here in the, let's see, one, two carbon position. We can even draw a chlorine here in the one, two, three carbon position. And notice we are not going to add one here because this would be the same as this. And we're not going to add one here because it's going to be the same as this. Remember, we want to not repeat structures. Now, this is the where this problem gets really, really tricky. Uh, so that's a bad drawing. That's even worse, but you get the picture. Um, why don't we add the chlorine here? Well, the reason is a little tricky if you uh, are just trying to eyeball it. But it becomes a little more easy to see if we were to draw out the actual carbons involved. Remember that um, in this line angle formula uh, structure, uh, we are not showing the hydrogens, we're only showing carbons. Uh, so notice how this carbon already is bonded to four other carbons. The chlorine is not going to displace any of these carbons. There is no free bonding site. This chlorine can replace a hydrogen, um, but it's not going to replace a carbon. And if you uh, really want to see why, uh, you have to draw out the curved arrows. Uh, it's a proton transfer. Um, it will actually form um, hydrochloric acid because this is actually coming from a dichloride molecule. Uh, but long story short, there is no place here for the chlorine to go. It cannot go here. And so we have to be careful and draw all possible structures. Uh, even though we're adding new potential binding sites, there they could, something could possibly bind there. That's what it looks like. When we actually draw out the structures, uh, there are in fact fewer possible constitutional isomers that can form. So there are three possible products. So just be careful when you draw out the possible products from a monochlorination reaction.